everybody. Welcome back to my series, Professional Video Production on a Shoestring Budget. Well, I'm really jacked uh, to be showing you this today. I, uh, I've got myself the Phantom version 1.1.1 from my good friends at B&H in New York. I've been watching the prices on this for a while because I really wanted to get one. And they had a special offer recently uh, for the Phantom 349. Plus they threw in the uh, Watson charger with four AA batteries and a, uh, an extra battery for the uh, drone. Um, great deal. So just over $300, you're getting a few extra goodies. Free shipping up here in Canada, so that was a nice bonus. And um, wow, what a machine. I've flown it a couple of times. This thing is just awesome. Um, Later on, we're going to go out and we're going to fly it. I'm going to give you a demo on flying it, you know, getting started outside before things to do before you fly it. But right now, let's just look at, you know, what it came with in the box and simply putting it together. Uh, of course, in the box, you get the controller with it. it. takes the four AA batteries. I've got a strap on here so I can let it go and have my hands free to do things. Um, and you get, of course, you get the GoPro mount with the Phantom. This is a standard mount for your standard configuration without the gimbal. Um, I'm using a Sony AS15 action cam and it came with it came with this little black mount here, pretty basic, just hangs on the bottom. And what that is, what that'll do, that'll allow you to mount your waterproof camera onto the bottom of that. Um, you know, of course you're going to be upside down, but you, when you drop it into Final Cut Pro, you would just flip it to get the right perspective. So, so that's going to work. I actually wanted to uh, do a different configuration using my um, tripod mount for my action cam. And uh, I'm going to do that in a separate episode just for my, my buddies with, and friends with the AS15 action cam. Um, so let's just look at what else came in the box. So you got your batteries, uh, you got your charger for the uh, the drone battery. They send you an extra set of props and I bought two more just to have them while I was doing it. What I didn't get was the prop guard, a set of prop guards. I think they're only $15 and I'm kind of kicking myself now because I'll probably be doing that later on just to have them, especially if you're flying inside, you'd really want those prop guards on. Um, <clears throat> of course, before I bought the Phantom, I was doing lots of YouTube research and online research and things like that. Um, a lot of people poo-pooed the manual. I went online and downloaded their manual and I found it, it, I found it really useful. It had some good tips in it, especially some good safety tips. Um, one of the things that mentioned in the manual that nobody else mentioned uh, on the YouTube videos was it suggested not to use a, a magnetized screwdriver when you're mounting the legs on the Phantom because of the, uh, because of the compass, because of the compass uh, mechanism. It can be uh, demagnetized, and the compass works in conjunction with your GPS. So it's a real critical part of your of your machine here. Um, so don't use a magnetized screwdriver when you're assembling it. And it also tells you to keep it away from speakers because, of, por of course, speakers have big magnets on the back. And and think about it now. All of our cars have front and back speakers. So when you're traveling, when you're transporting this. You probably don't want to put it in your trunk or the back of your SUV or your wagon because there'll be a set of speakers back there. So you're going to want to put that in your bench seat. That's what I'm going to do anyway, just to avoid that problem. In the case that you do harm the compass, on startup, there will be a signal to let you know that there's something wrong with the compass. You can find out what exact those details in your manual. Um, and you're going to want to stop immediately and not try to fly it because the compass does work with the GPS. Um, and apparently you can go online, download their, their software, um, and, and in there you'll find a fix for that, for that eventuality if you do demagnetize your compass. And just one more quick thing, um, I couldn't afford to buy a proper carry case. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping to get one eventually. But what I've done, and I've done this in the past with cameras and stuff, is I just took the packing that it came with, and I cut a couple of holes in there. And this is the box it came with. I put a few chunks of foam in there, and um, and now I can uh, I can get my drone in there. Uh, of course, you got to watch your props, and um, 
and you know, and I'm gonna rig up a lid for this. And so this will be okay for traveling in the car. You're not gonna put this in a cargo section of a plane. But just for traveling around in my car, I'll rig up a lid. So somebody looks in the window and they see that I don't have this beautiful DJI Phantom in the back seat for them just to smash and grab. So there's just a few things. So let's get out there and, and um, let's take this thing for a spin. Uh, like I said, I'm loving it. You, you, I think you're gonna be impressed. Okay, so we're outside with our drone and we're gonna do our first flight. So to begin with, first thing you do on your controller, you want your switches up. You want to be in GPS mode. I, as far as I'm concerned for beginner pilots, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to stay in GPS mode for a long time. It's very forgiving. You'll see what I'm talking about in a couple of secs. Before you plug in the Phantom, before you plug in the drone, turn on your controller. Beeps, green light, everything's good. This strap is something I rigged up so I can, so I can go hands-free with the controller, not have to put it on the ground. So now we're going to plug in the uh, drone. So I plugged in the drone. We've got some some flashing red lights to begin with. Did you hear that beeping at the beginning? That means it's happy. There's some warning signals that'll tell you that it's not happy. You can find those in the manual. I think the beep and a long beep. Follow, like a short beep followed by a long beep. I think that means there's something wrong with the, com the compass. Um, you, you won't want to fly if you've got an error with the compass because that'll affect your GPS mode. So right now it's going through its system. Let's get a closer look at this. This takes a couple of minutes. What it's doing is warming up, locking up to its uh, satellites for GPS mode. And um, I think we're all ready, good to go. I believe that that green light blinking like that means that it's ready to go. And the next thing we're going to want to do is the next thing we're going to want to do now is uh, calibrate the compass. So what you do is you take the switch here, your GPS switch, and you go back and forth five to six times. When that light turns yellow, it's ready to calibrate the compass. So it's as simple as picking it up, facing the yellow light towards you, counterclockwise, 360 degrees. The light turns green. Face the light up, counterclockwise, 360 degrees. So you've got a blinking orange and then, and then it goes back to the blinking green. Okay, so we're ready to fly. Let's see how, how we make out here. So, GPS, both switches up. You're in GPS mode. Let's turn it on. Let's take it in the air. So there you can see, <clears throat> I've taken off, and right out of the bat, what you wanna do is just, just see how that thing will just hover for you in a stationary position. Uh, it's a great feature for, for newbie pilots. Um, if, you, if you get into trouble, you let go of the controls and it'll hover. It's drifting a little bit. I've got a bit of wind. So a couple of things that I think you want to think about before you take off. Do a pre-flight check. Look around. When you're calibrating the GPS, you're going to want to try to avoid concrete buildings that might have a lot of rebar in them. Uh, metal can affect your GPS lock and your satellite lock. Um, look around, see, check out your environment. I like this area because it's my private property. It could be a bigger area, but it's a private area and, and I don't have to worry about the public. If you're in a public park, you're going to have to be aware of people, especially kids. Those blades could hurt somebody. This is a powerful machine. So before you power it up and take off, just check out your environment. Something else you might want to do is look at the weather. Is there any big storm clouds on the horizon? Uh, in the manual, it says for wind, moderate winds. I don't know what that is. Maybe 10 miles an hour, uh, you know, six clicks an hour, I'm not sure. But, you know, you'll want to check the wind because that's going to affect your flying performance as well as your camera performance. 
if you're not using an expensive gimbal. So those are a few things to think about. Um, another thing that, that I'll be doing is I'll get a timer. Um, you're not supposed to use your cell phones too close to these things again when you're setting it up. But I'll get some kind of timer. They say the flight time is about 10 to 15 minutes, 15 minutes. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is set my timer for 10 minutes and when it goes off, I'll make sure that the drone is fairly close to where I'm operating it from. And that way, if I see that flashing red light, if that flashing green light, when it turns to red, that means the power is low. You want to land it right away. You don't want to take chances with your, with your lovely new DJI Phantom toy. Um, so I think a good tip in your learning um, to get used to the controls, if the drone's facing away from you, the controls are very self-explanatory. You move the uh, tilt forward, it's going to tilt forward. You go to the right, it's going to go to the right. Go to the left, it's going to go to the left. You come back, and it'll even come back for you. And then, of course, a little bit more power is going to go up. As soon as you release the power, it will stop rising. It'll go to its neutral position. So let's see what kind of shots we can get here today. I've got the flashing red light. I've got the flashing, I've got a flashing red light. That's telling me that it's getting low on power. So I'm going to land it. Of course, when you're landing it, you're going to want to be as gentle as you can. And turn it off. Okay, so there you go, folks. That's my second flight, um, and it felt pretty good. So the other thing I wanted to talk about with the drone is it has a return, a return home fail-safe feature, and it's important to understand how that works um, to avoid getting into trouble. When the drones, when you first power up the drone, and it's going through its, its warm-up and its uh, GPS satellite lock, it's recording its fail-safe home position. Exact, wherever you turn that, wherever you plug the drone in, it's recording that as its fail-safe home. Um, important to remember, if you're taking it out on the water, you have to actually fly the drone for a couple of seconds before this fail-safe home point is recorded. So it just takes a few seconds, but if you don't fly it, if you just let it warm up and do its GPS lock and think, oh great, I've got my home point recorded, and you go out on the water and lose contact, it, it, it won't know what to do. It won't have its home position, position recorded. You have to fly it just for a couple of seconds after it's warm up and its GPS lock to record that fail-safe position. The other thing to understand about the return home fail-safe feature is how it works. Um, and again, I think this, is, this was some useful information in the manual that I actually printed off the DGA website. What the, what the drone will do, once it loses contact with the controller, is it will vertically position, it, position itself at 20 meters, or just over 60 feet. Now that's important to understand that. And then from that position, it will take a direct line back to 
its fail-safe home position. Now that's an important thing to understand. For me, you can see around me there's trees, <clears throat> there's a lot of trees that are over 20 meters. If I'm flying over the treetops and it loses contact with the controller, it's going to stop, hover, and it's going to drop down to 20 meters. Chances are it's going to end up in a tree. If it doesn't end up in a tree right away, after a few seconds of establishing its home point, it's going to go on a direct line at 20 meters elevation back to its fail-safe home position. Chances are it's going to get hung up in a tree, you know, 60 feet, 20 meters up. That's a long way to go to, to climb up a tree and retrieve your dome, drone. And it's probably going to get banged up a little bit as well. Um, same thing if you're in a building and you lose contact with the controller. It's going to go to 20 meters, probably going to run into a ceiling, might hit a, a ceiling fan or, or whatever. Um, a friend of mine was shooting uh, a naval ship that was being prepared to be sunk as an artificial reef. And he was watching his smartphone and uh, he lost contact with his drone and it was behind a metal stack on this naval ship. It immediately went to its failsafe, its 20 meter position and it started to head for home. It ran into one of the metal stacks. Um, as a testament to the durability of these little guys, it did make it home without too much uh, damage. He was able to repair it and get back up in the air. So again, uh, addressing the fail-safe uh, home feature, one of the things I like about this basic controller is, is that I'm, I'm not going to put a, a smartphone on this and, and fly this thing um, FPV, watching a smartphone, and, because I think it would be easy for me to lose sight of the drone. I'll be looking at the screen, looking at these great shots I'm getting, and before you know it, I could, I could be out of, out of contact with the controller, and then the drone's gonna go into the fail-safe mode, which can get me into trouble. I'm sure that that's what happened to my friend when he was uh, shooting the metal ship and he, and he lost contact with the controller. He's got the, he's got the more advanced vision, and he's using his smartphone. I can see the advantage of that. I can certainly see the advantage of that. But for a newbie flyer, I really like this idea with a simple controller in GPS mode where I always have to keep my eye on the drone so that I'm keeping it close to me and, uh, you know, I'm keeping it, you know, simple flying and, and keeping it where I can see it and I can always get it home even if something goes wrong and I lose power in the controller or something and it's got to go into fail safe. So, so there you go, folks. I hope that helps. Just a couple of pointers. Um, check out uh, for more videos on professional video production check out my uh, playlist there's a link up here in the top right hand corner um, and if you want to check out uh, if you want to subscribe the links on the bottom if you want to check out my channel that's just below the window click on my name that'll take you to my to my YouTube channel I've got over 450 videos it's very eclectic the uh, video production series is I think it's quite good there's environmental uh, documentaries, uh, there's other how-to series, there's all kinds of stuff there. There's lots of music videos. I'm in the southwest coast of Vancouver Island. Lots of great stories here. So check out my channel and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. So the reason you want to give yourself a lot of room here, as you can see, that little thing can really move. So you're really gonna to wanna to give yourself a lot of room. You can get yourself into trouble real quick with this thing.